Well, I turned 42 years old. I almost had a heart attack and I almost got into an accident the day before my birthday, which subsequently put me in the emergency room with the fake heart attack, uh, which landed me in my doctor's office celebrating my birthday with my doctor. Never want to do that again. Getting worked up and ruled out for a heart attack. Turns out I'm fine. Turns out I have never been more glad to be alive. And in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, the things that I'm doing, how I got off social media for my birthday for the first time ever, because I didn't want to have that serotonin dopamine overload, which is a, it's, it's, it's a lot. I'm not gonna lie. And how I wanted to be present. We're gonna talk about how I went to get aura photos with my husband and how that was a really dope experience in Queens. We're gonna talk about the magazines I am reading because you know, when you're not on social media for five hours a day, it turns out you have time to read. And the birthday present I bought myself, which we're gonna unbox together. Let's do it. Before my almost heart attack, I was deciding that I was going to be off social media for my birthday. And the reason why I decided I was gonna be off social media for my birthday was because I didn't want that serotonin bump, the bump in dopamine. I know it's a bump in dopamine. And I just didn't wanna be on social media all day, looking at my phone with the tags and the stories, with the likes, with the messages that then turn into texts. And I wanted to be present. So I said, you know what? This year, I am not going to go on social media. I'm not gonna announce my birthday. This was like the first time in almost 15 years that I did that. Because I've been on social media forever. It felt so good. And honestly, a lot of people forgot that it was even my birthday. I didn't care. I wasn't going to be petty Betty, you know? I do have a tendency to do that sometimes because I'm from Jersey. But I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to be petty. If you forgot my birthday, cool. The only people who I should get upset if they forget it is my parents and my husband. And they all remember. And I have friends texting me and they were like, you know what? I'm sorry I forgot. I'm like, don't worry about it. Because this year I'm celebrating all month. And instead of having a big party this year, the other thing I decided I wanted to do, because whenever I have a party, I never get to talk to everybody. I'm always worried about planning it. I'm always making sure it's going right. I never get to really talk to people. And then I am home that night and I'm like, wow, I feel really bad. So-and-so drove an hour to come see me and I didn't even get to talk to them. And this year I said, that's not going to happen. No mas. We are going to spend time together, but one-on-one. -on -one. So I am going to basically hang out with everybody who I would think is very very important to be at a party if I was throwing it, but we are going to do a little one-on-one -on -one thing. So we're doing things like going to the Bridgerton experience. We went to this rooftop bar and lounge that I have been really wanting to go to downtown, which was amazing. We're called Overstory. I am going to go shopping with a friend. We went for massages with my mom. We went skincare shopping with another friend. We're going to do things together. We're going to talk. We're going to catch up and we're going to be present with one another. And I am going to show my friends how much I appreciate them being in my life and how I want to have these like little one-on-one -on -one parties. The other thing I decided this year after the fake heart attack, the almost heart attack, I am celebrating all year and I am documenting on this channel. And this channel is going to change a little bit. I know this channel has been the Donna's project, but it is time for me to really be me. And if I'm going to be documenting my life, it's not going to be. I am the Donna's project. I am Donna, the project. That's it. The project's turning into Donna Guerreros. And we're just going to be talking about stuff that I love to do. We're going to do vlogs. I'm going to show you New York. You're going to meet some of my friends and the people who I love. And we're going to do things like unboxing of, you know, expensive things that I buy myself that I probably shouldn't. But, you know, you almost have a fake heart attack and you're like, I'm going to get the purse. That's what we're going to do. And that's what's happening on this. And if you don't know me, my name is Donna. I am a nurse and I'm an artist from New York City. And this is my channel. And I'm 42 years old and I have really figured out a lot about myself in the last few years. And that's what I try to share on this channel. That's what I plan on sharing more moving forward. I've been documenting all of this in a podcast, which you can listen to. Everything's linked below. And yeah, I'm kind of just trying to get through the dumpster fire while also documenting it from the inside and all of the beautiful that can happen in this chaos that we are all in. So first things first, let's get to the unboxing. This is Luar. They are a great company from New York City. And oh, look at this. I'm stoked. I have been wanting this purse forever. And then it turns out on my birthday, they had, well, like right before my birthday, they had a 50% off sale for their purses. So I got this for 50% off. 
So let's unbox it together. Oh my god, it's so freaking cute. Ah! And I've been following this designer for a while, how they're taking over now and how they're getting the accolades that they absolutely deserve and all the attention and the fashion week this year. It's just so heartwarming to like watch somebody who you just like like so much and you're so into what they do and how much they deserve it and watch them getting it. And I really wanted to get a bag this year to support. So it just worked out. So anyway, this is the bag. It's cute. Well, yeah, love it. It's a little tight, so I'll have to like work on that. And then it has, I think it has a cross. Oh, it does have a cross body strap. Let's take that out of here. Got the strap. So yeah, let's put that on there. Great bag. Ah, love it. Okay. That was my gift to me. I wanted to basically be off social because I said like this over dopamine stimulation hit. I wanted to slow down and I'm glad I did because I really felt like I was present with my friends. I felt like I really got to hang out with them. My husband asked me what I wanted to do for my birthday. And I told him that I wanted to go to Queens and go to Magic Jewelry. And if you don't know Magic Jewelry, it is a shop, jewelry and I don't know, a feng shui specialty shop. So they specialize in feng shui jewelry and feng shui, like consulting and, and that. So they take a photo of you and they take an aura photo of you. And this is my aura photo. You can see it. Based on your aura photo, they recommend jewelry or some stones and things that you may need. And we had a really lovely consultation and my husband and I did it together, which was super cool. It was a really lovely experience. And again, with all this stuff, I love it because of the introspection of it. Talking to the man who read our auras and, and, and he's like, are you sleeping enough? Are you doing this? Have you been taking care of your body? Had a lot of like, you know, questions that make you think. And that's why I really love this stuff. Again, I always talk about how it's not necessarily for all predictive measures for me. I know some people do lean into a lot of it for predictive. I really do like to use it for self-care and I really do like to kind of let it sit with me and, and see things from a different perspective. It's kind of like looking at a map, right? And it's like looking at a map of yourself and we're looking at it from the driver's seat because we're driving the car, right? We're driving the car of our life. I'm using like a car, which was like almost accident. Anyway, you're driving this car. That's like your life. And you have to sometimes get out of the driver's seat because one, you need to take a break and you got to like see it from a different perspective. Maybe you need to see it from the back seat. Maybe you need to see it from a bird's eye view overhead. Maybe you need to see it from the rear view mirror and look back and see all the stuff you've accomplished. Maybe you need to be looking forward and really paying attention and looking at that map and figuring out what's next and kind of planning and plotting. I really love these tools and I love stuff like this because of the fact that you can really be introspective and it makes you ask questions and you have someone across from you who knows nothing about you kind of like picking and prodding and, and asking you these things about yourself so you can kind of go in and dig deep. So after that, we went to a restaurant in Queens and the place is called Gong Gan and they have the coolest cakes. And so we went there to get me a birthday cake. My husband planned it. It was the coolest cake I've ever had. It was like this um, black sesame cheesecake. It was delicious. We had this amazing mint and cilantro drink. It had no alcohol in it. It was just like this refreshing. I don't know. I feel like it was on an island somewhere drinking it. It just was so fresh and so good. And we had such a great time there. And I'm so glad he took me there. And if you're in Queens or you're in New York City, you definitely got to check this place out. It's so dope. And then we went to a magazine shop in the city that I love to go to to get some magazines. These aren't the magazines I got because the ones I got are, are in the other room. These were the closest to me. These are two that I'm really, really loving. This is The Gentle Woman. This is an issue that I saved. I really, really love this mag. It's great. Just the fashion, the stories. This is just a good one that I love. And then the other magazine that is my favorite it. I'm loving this magazine so much, Home Girls, and I have to get the new issue. They didn't have it. I just love this magazine. Home Girls is like my favorite magazine. It's a magazine that basically celebrates women who love men's clothing and who love like a masculine aesthetic and who dress in a masculine aesthetic and who love streetwear and love men's like luxury fashion and men's watches. I love that. And I really love playing with like themes of masculine and feminine. I said on a podcast that I was on about scents and candles and a podcast where I was like promoting my candles. I had said that I 
really love wearing like a super sexy, like ultra femme dress and then throwing on like a men's cologne. And I have a ton of men's colognes. I love men's colognes. I prefer to wear a man's cologne or like a unisex scent. And then I love wearing like streetwear or sweatpants or like, like a running suit like I have on now. And then putting like a super highly femme, very like florally and citrusy. I have this one that's kind of, it's called like after the rain and it's a scent that's supposed to smell like after it rains, like something sweet and those notes. And I love those notes against a very like dress down or very, I don't know, an outfit that doesn't compliment it. It's like such a juxtaposition. And I love that. So homegirls embodies like women with such confidence and attitude and they're just such themselves and so unique, but then they're like all covered up or in men's clothing or in in these like baggy clothing and not what you think or what you've led to believe like sexy is. It's just such a different way of just looking at women and their interests. And I just love that. Like I found a home in this magazine for like so many of my interests. And I am really a huge fan of that magazine. I've also been thinking about like my birthday rituals and the things that I do. And one of the things that I do for my birthday is I go out and get all new panties and bras and I buy myself all new makeup, like fresh makeup. And that's something I do like every year. And that's like a big birthday ritual. But it got me thinking like, I don't really collect stuff because a lot of my friends are like into collecting things now. I have like friends who are collecting watches and I have friends that are collecting purses. And, you know, just like now that they are in different places in their lives and they can actually afford this stuff and, you know, they're not living check to check anymore. And they're kind of like buying themselves, you know, the things that they've always wanted. I have a friend who's like collecting art and they've gotten like really into that. And another one who's like collecting furniture and and they're constantly like redecorating and decorating their apartment. And someone was like, what do you collect? We were at dinner and they're like, what are you into? What do you collect? And I was like, I don't know, experiences. (laughs) Like, I like going away, like doing things, but I kind of like felt left out in the conversation a little bit. I was like, I don't know, do I have to get like a collection now? Do I have to start collecting? Like my grandfather collected stamps. He was like a huge stamp collector. And then I have a relative who collects like jewelry and watches. And what happens when you die? Someone throws it away, unless the person cares about it as much as you do. And I don't know, like a lot of times I've always seen collections as something that people, they don't use. They just keep in a box box or they only take it out for special occasions. I'm like, I don't want to do stuff like that. And that's what I was like saying at dinner. Like my collecting is more stuff that's, I don't know, I can use and I can enjoy because it's like, when do you really get to enjoy it? A lot of the time, you just have to like keep it good and clean and make sure you can resell it. I have a lot of friends who collect sneakers and they don't even wear their sneakers. And I'm like, you guys are collecting all the sneakers. You can't even take the joy. And they're like, oh, well, the joy for me is having it. And I'm like, I get it. Different strokes for different folks, right? But for me, that's not it. So I was kind of thinking like when I go on vacation, I buy perfume or cologne every time I go on vacation, like talking about the scents, or I buy myself a dress. So like whenever I wear that dress, like I have a dress from Spain, I have a dress from France, I have a dress from Canada and Montreal. I have dresses from like different states I've been to, Ireland. And whenever I put the dress on, I'm always like, oh, this reminds me of Ireland. I bought that at this boutique. And it's kind of like, a memory of the experience. And it also instead of buying like a tchotchke or like a magnet or a keychain, again, if that's what you're into, cool. I love experience and I really love remembering the experience and the visceralness of like feeling it and, and putting on that dress and being like, oh, I remember when I put this on in the dressing room in Spain and that little vintage shop. And I do love buying like vintage dresses and Oddly enough, tonight we went out and my vintage dress that I bought in New Orleans a few years ago when my friend was recording her show and I went down to be the set photographer, I bought this dress that I had to put on my credit card and I was like cringing. I was like sweating when I was like swiping it because I was like, I don't have the money for this dress. I don't have the money for this dress, but I loved it and I loved the way it looked on me. Anyway, tonight I was trying to take it off and I like ripped the whole armpit, which I know, right? I gotta get it fixed. Oh man. Collecting experiences, collecting dresses, collecting perfume, lingerie. And kind of like antique jewelry. I'm really into antique jewelry. I've been looking at like antique watches recently. And the other gift that I got myself for my birthday was this really cool watch. It wasn't an antique one. I was going to get an antique one. My uncle actually got me an antique watch for my birthday, which was super dope. But I got myself a new watch. I was watching a video on YouTube of a woman who likes collects watches. And she was talking about this watch that she always wanted since she was a little kid. And I was like, I never heard of this watch. We were around the same age. So I'm like, and she's like, oh, remember it was so big. And I'm like, I don't remember this. So I went online to Google it. And then when I Googled it, I ended up on this like watch page. And then on the watch page, they were talking about this other watch. And I'm not going to show it yet. I'm going to like wait for another video for it because I want it to be here. But when I saw this watch, I was like, this is your watch. You know, when you see something and you're like, I wish I made this. I was so jealous that I didn't think to make this. Whenever I get that feeling of like, man, I wish I would have thought of this. So cool this exists because I get to experience it. But at the same time, I'm like, damn it. Why didn't I think of this? I'm so impressed by this. 
this. Yeah, that was what happened when I saw this watch. So like I bought it on the spot. I can't wait for it to come. Can't wait to show it to everybody and wear it. And I'm super psyched to get it. That's the stuff I got myself. And just like thinking about how I like want stuff that I can wear and use and not get sit in a box or sit on a shelf that you can only dust off once in a while. And that's kind of the energy I'm moving forward with in this like 42nd year. And this year, I really want to use this channel to document me celebrating this year of my life because of kind of like what happened and just really embracing all of me and my experiences and using this as kind of like a little catalog as well for myself to kind of catalog these experiences and the stuff that I do this year and like the growth that I have. I've been using my podcast to like really document like my personal growth and using it as like a diary. That feeling of like, I have done a lot of healing and I've done a lot of work on myself. And I kind of feel like this like empty room. And it's like, now it's time to put furniture in the room. Like we've cleaned it out. We've dusted the cobwebs. We've scrubbed the floor. We wiped down the walls, the baseboards, everything. We've done it. And now it's time to like, let's get a couch in there. We're not going to use that same old couch. Let's get a new couch. Let's get some curtains. Let's get some stuff on the wall, but like, we're not going to go to home goods and, or, you know, like some store and just buy everything because it's there and it's all cohesive. No, like let's collect stuff. Like that's what I'm going to be collecting. And that's kind of like how I want to be moving forward, make it a home again inside of me, but like a very upgraded and updated and non baggage settled, not addicted to chaos and conflict and the rush and the things that were clearly not working for me, not aiding in me really embodying the best version of myself. And yeah, it's all a work in progress and like the work never stops, right? You got to enjoy what you're doing and stop and slow down every now and then. And that's kind of what I learned this birthday. So this birthday was different in a good way. And it was definitely what I needed. Yeah, that's why I just wanted to share this with you. And I don't know if anybody's had any experiences like this. I know we've been really in this dumpster fire the last few years. If you have had a birthday to remember, I want to know. If you are on some new vibes and some new, like, I just want to experience, I just want to be out here feeling good and not sweating the small stuff. And if you have come to like a lot of the realizations that I have talked about in this video, I want to know. I also want to know your birthday rituals and routines. What do you do for yourself? for your birthday? Like, how do you celebrate it? What's the thing you do? How do you take care of yourself? And if you've like switched it up and you've gone from being like a little more solo to now having like big parties and having extravagant events, cool, I wanna know. If you've pulled back and now you're just like hanging out and you're like, I just wanna be alone on my birthday. I have a friend who went away by herself this year and I may do that next year. She went to the Dominican Republic and she's like, I'm gonna be by myself. I don't wanna be with anybody. I just really wanna sit with myself and kind of think about how I want the next year of life to be and be reflective of how the previous year was and all the things that I took from it. Kind of like her own personal New Year's. I wanna know your ideas, tell me below. All right, that's it for this video. I've talked enough. Stay safe, stay healthy. Most importantly, take care of yourself. Follow, like, subscribe. I'll see you on the other side. Bye guys.